Uh, hello, uh, my name is Firas Murtada. Uh, I am a professor and medical physics director at uh, the Sydney Camel Cancer Center uh, with Thomas Jefferson in Philadelphia. Uh, today, I would like to uh, share with you the uh, uh, talk about physics, basics of HDR brachytherapy. Uh, this is uh, part of the, the third series, the uh, technical and imaging aspects uh, uh, process brachytherapy course uh, uh, sponsored by the ABS, the American Brachytherapy Society. I don't have any disclosures. So the objectives of today's talk is to uh, uh, give you some basics of uh, the physics of HDR, high dose rate brachytherapy uh, with the focus of prostate um, and look at the workflow of uh, imaging, in particular, uh, the real-time uh, transrectal ultrasound, uh, since it's the most common uh, uh, procedure that's done. All, as well as we will talk about basic radiation safety concepts. So brachytherapy, uh, brachy uh, means in Latin, short or near. So it's a therapy at a very, very short distances um, that involves application usually with sealed radioactive material uh, into or immediately adjacent to the tumor in the process uh, that's the intent is to place that source inside the gland itself. As you know, uh, prostate cancer option treatments uh, uh, could include uh, the following prostate external beam uh, with the hormones, LDR, this is low dose rate uh, using uh, very low energy uh, seeds, external beam with LDR, uh, the LDR will be as a boost, uh, HDR, high dose rate, uh, brachytherapy, monotherapy, or HDR as the boost with external beam. So why HDR brachytherapy in terms of the physics? Uh, we believe uh, and it has been proven, proven to provide you with a dose escalation uh, that is not uh, feasible or possible using other methods. It's coupled, when coupled with image guidance, HDR for process can be implemented in a very safe manner. This is in, in particular in the last uh, uh, 10, 15 years that has been well demonstrated. In fact, there has been also an evidence from the radiobiology aspects that an increase of 10 gray, gray is a unit of dose, we'll discuss that later. Uh, it implies uh, uh, about 10% increase in biochemical disease-free survival. So definitely uh, the amount of dose you, you increasing uh, to, uh, to the prostate uh, with HDR will give you uh, survival advantages. So let's talk about the technology. This is the afterloader, a typical afterloader. After it provides you with a very high doses per fraction. This is a dose fraction. Um, the uh, radionuclide that's provided provide a very steep dose gradient. And the, uh, the nice thing about, or the advantages is that even when you have, when you have motion of the organs, it's uh, fairly unaffected because the catheters move with that prostate uh, itself due to motion. There's a high conformality uh, in the dosing uh, due to inverse planning, and I'll show an example of that, and which results in improved accuracy. And typical uh, times for treatment, that's the dwell time uh, when the source is out in the order of minutes. So, Here's an example on the left panel, high dose rate isodose contours. Uh, you could see these are the, this is the prostate. And um, if you just look at the 50% and 30% isodose lines that uh, reside outside the gland, uh, compared to volumetric uh, VMAT, we call it, this is an inverse planning external beam, volumetric uh, inverse planning. Uh, you definitely see that the, the uh, high dose rate, uh, isodose contours are closer, um, uh, which means uh, you have less dose to the surrounding normal tissue. In particular here, the rectum is very close. And uh, this is clearly uh, an advantage for high dose rate. And that's what we mean by conformality. 
So we, we talk about that brachytherapy in general, the, you bring in the source to the target, uh, thus those escalation is possible as compared to external beam alone. Uh, using inverse planning techniques in treatment planning provides ways for greater conformality and sparing the organs at risk surrounding. Uh, there's a potential for high efficacy and lower risk of toxicity or risk uh, of secondary malignancies relative to other modalities uh, in uh, radiation oncology. So the most common radionuclide uh, used in prostate high dose rate is iridium-192. The half-life is, is 74 days. So typically we do a source exchange once a quarter. So every three months, uh, you will see a dose uh, we, you, you require to so, uh, change that source. Otherwise, uh, to uh, the uh, dwell time or the time it takes to, to treat it will be uh, longer than uh, 10 minutes. So we try to uh, uh, do a source exchange to reduce the weight. Uh, the energy is, uh, this is the average energy is 380 kV. Uh, so it's fairly high energy. Uh, thus, it requires uh, a vault that is uh, designed specially to uh, um, make sure that the exposure outside the uh, treatment vault is reasonable, is low. Uh, relative to low energy seeds like cesium-131, iodine, and polydium, these are low dose rate. Uh, sources that are used currently in, in uh, LDR process seed implantation. Um, and the other radionuclides, obviously, these are just for historical comparison of what uh, other used to be. There's no longer radium, cobalt, or cesium-137. These are no longer actually in our clinics. Uh, neither the gold-198. This, uh, this is kind of uh, the uh, prior sources in the past but I just gave them as a reference. So let's talk about what we mean by high dose rate. Um, it's, it's defined as um, a dose rate uh, of 12 gray per hour. Um, and that's why we are able to deliver the, um, the dose we need in, in a matter of minutes. The uh, HDR brachytherapy is widely, has been accepted over the last decade. Minimally, it is a minimally invasive procedure for treating prostate cancer. It provides effective dose escalation, as we mentioned, um, with the advantages of minimizing toxicity and favorable quality of life outcomes. And that has been proven because of the inverse planning that we are able today to do using ultrasound guidance in real time. Uh, delivering a high radiation dose in a single or few fractions now is possible, uh, but requires highest possible accuracy and precision uh, to actually accomplish that uh, with the minimal uh, uh, toxicity or side effects. So here's the, uh, this is from Dr. Morton from Sunny Brook, just examples. This is as a function of time. Uh, the different fractionations and different dosing that has been explored and used. And uh, currently we are moving toward using less and, and less fractions. In fact, a single fraction has been proven to, to, to work well in, in, the last, in the literature uh, in the last few years. So let, let's look at workflow using a transrectal ultrasound. This is a procedure, I think Dr. Keyes in, um, in her talk uh, prior to mine, she mentioned the details of this, but it is truly the, it's a fundamental change over the last uh, few years to, to utilize uh, this type of uh, imaging to give you a well, um, um, a good model for treatment planning and visualization of the needles uh, during insertion and or seed depositioning. In case of uh, uh, the LDR low dose rate, that will be seeds. And for high dose rate will be for the catheter placement for the high dose rate source to come in uh, precisely where you need it to dwell. So the ultrasound based prostate high dose rate uh, has 
three major components, the truss and the stepper. This is number one here. The, the afterloader, this is where the a single source uh, of Iridium-192 resides. Uh, and of course, the treatment planning station, the imaging acquisition software, it's all in this uh, portable uh, CPU. The, so this is a depiction of a high dose rate brachytherapy methodology where you have real time uh, plan optimization uh, uh, in the panel below. Uh, you could see this uh, is, is uh, being uh, modeled the, using the single stepping source, the iridium source that comes here. You could see it here. It's, it dwells per, per position precisely within an accuracy uh, with high accuracy and a precision of plus or minus one millimeter. So the afterloading technology of today is proven to be very effective to to give you a very precise dose painting. We call this as a dose paint because you're able to uh, optimize this picture in real time um, uh, using that source stepping. And the way we accomplish that is with the following. This is a nice workflow. This I got it uh, from, uh, from Electa uh, for their system. But the idea for everything else is the same. The patient starts with the ultrasound imaging, the contouring, dose planning, uh, needle insertion based on the initial plan. Uh, you do the reconstruction of the needle and the all the and it's a feedback loop. So you really try to understand and optimize this process until uh, the final plan is uh, obtained by iterative, iteratively adding the needle one at a time. So once you are, you're happy with the plan, you approve it and the uh, treatment delivery while the patient still is on the table and patient out. So this is the modern uh, real-time HDR workflow that works very efficiently. And you could do this in, in a very efficient manner. So this is an example of an inverse plan. Uh, this is um, from, um, from the uh, same system I showed you uh, earlier. Uh, the software that give, give you iterative reconstruction, contouring of the gland and the catheters as you place them in. And it will suggest to you where these dwell positions, you could see these red dots here, is that where the optimal plan would be. Uh, this is just an example of what we mean by inverse planning. This is a HIPPO optimization. It's one of the algorithms this vendor has. Basically, you define the prostate, the goal, the target, what you want to achieve, and the organ at risk, for example, the rectum here. Uh, there is a matrix that we, we, we optimize to give us the ideal uh, dose uh, to both target and uh, organ at risk. Of course, we want to maximize those to the gland and minimize to the, to the surrounding tissues. This is another uh, algorithm called inverse planning simulated annealing or IPSA that's also used in the process HDR where the organs also recognize and they're using ultrasound, for example, in this uh, image modality example. And uh, using uh, uh, those object objectives, these are from the University of California in San Francisco, uh, where they devised this uh, methodology to optimize. These are called those volume histograms for the organs at risks, as well as the DIL. This is the where they're boosting the the um, uh, in the prostate gland. Uh, this is where they wanted to optimize that uh, dosing. So. So basically they, they are working this methodology to obtain the optimal dwell um, positions of the iridium source, as well as the dwell times per position. Just to get back in the past and some still do CT technique, uh, but I wanted to point to you here. This is, this is very important to look at the workflow efficiency because we do need to make this process uh, um, less uh, time um, intense. And the, on the order of uh, looking at a CT-based technique versus ultrasound, uh, you're looking at about uh, 
90 minutes uh, or less doing an ultrasound. And of course, that will even get dropped lower if uh, the team works together to, to be more efficient in, in many ways. Um, also, the disadvantage here, I needed to point that to you that the CT based technique, uh, there is a but because of the lengthy process and moving the patient from CT back to the vault, if you don't have CT and HDR in the same room, not many of us have that, is the, the you do run the risk of catheter displacement. This is where the these catheters you place under ultrasound guidance could possibly dis, uh, move. And this is a study that shows that you could have significant displacement. In fact, we could see here, this is what we planned. Um, and this is what happened before delivery. After they verified the entire implant has moved, uh, whether the process uh, or the something occurred that reduced, uh, that will uh, definitely cause a lot of uh, underdosing. So the process, that this is the volume to 100% of, of the prescription. It's planned at 97% and it could drop to 77% due to this. Same thing with the dose to 90%. This is metrics from the DVH. Again, it's not optimal. And you could see also the urethra could actually now be overdosed uh, compared to what was planned. So we have to be careful, not that this is not possible, but you have to do extra step to ensure that this doesn't happen. Also, we, I want to point out that from CT, uh, now we are currently, there's a lot of promise of MR. This is T2 weighted 2D images uh, from, um, from uh, TG303. This is from the APM. This is a, our uh, so recent recommendations on how we could do process HDR with MR guidance. So that's also coming up to be a very promising alternative to CT. Uh, so to get back to the physics uh, factors impacting HDR prostate, we talked about image modality, fidelity, whether you're using CT, MR, ultrasound, and how accurate these contours. This is very important uh, to really give you an accurate picture of what, uh, where you're going to do the dose painting. The HDR source localization accuracy, that's the afterloader technology I described, and its ability to place that source within high precision, hopefully plus or minus one millimeter, we feel this is adequate accuracy. Uh, dose model assumption in the treatment planning system, the inverse planning uh, objectives, how accurate those are, as well as the source. This is a decaying source, so we definitely need to track that in real time uh, to give you the right dwell time per position. So all of these factors, and there is more, but these are the most important, truly impact clinical outcome quality for high dose rate brachytherapy. Just an example of ultrasound image quality. Uh, definitely, uh, these are tests that you should perform during the initial commissioning of the program and annually. Make sure that you don't forget that these things could change the calibrations of the grid. This is a special calibration test uh, using uh, the um, uh, 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 quantitative phantoms that will give you uh, understanding of your accuracy and precision. So the last segment I'd like to share with you is radiation uh, safety because it's important for you. Um, the most three, the three concepts you should remember is time, distance, and shielding. Minimize your time around the source. And we usually ask you to not be around an iridium source, obviously. Uh, inside the afterloader, it's minimal, so you could stand there. It's not a big issue because it's well shielded. And that's exactly goes to shielding. Obviously, if the source is out, you are outside the vault, your door is closed, so your, your radiation doses are very minimal. And of course, the third one is distance. It's the radiation exposure falls as a, as a function of one over distance square. It's a, it's a physics law. Uh, so we know that in, uh, in case of an uh, radiation incident, that keeping distance will, will help a lot with reducing your exposure. And this is a concept called uh, ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable. We monitor for radiation workers, um, um, and it is important to regularly um, uh, concept 
that uh, we, we, we should adhere in our practices. Uh, you also need um, uh, a quality management program. Uh, this is this the QMP. We call it a QMP. That's uh, it's a it's a, your SOPs that will um, in, ensure that you don't or you prevent any unintended administration of radiation to the patients as well as to the personnel. And uh, it is uh, it's critical to develop when you you have this. Uh, uh, the um, radiation safety aspects of your program. In terms of terminology, I just wanted to remind you that these are the terms. Rankin is a unit of radiation exposure. Um, it's used uh, very much still. It's an older unit. There is a newer unit called, um, 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 I will talk about it uh, later. It's the REM here. It actually goes from Rankin's to RADS. It's a unit of absorbed dose. Uh, the SI unit is the gray, so you saw me, um, the new unit is in gray, so typically now we, we describe, prescribe doses to the process in, in this unit rather than in the old units of RADS. Uh, REM is unit of dose equivalent. This is, um, it is, um, it's an important unit when uh, you're looking at radiation protection aspects. But commonly for iridium source, uh, iridium-192, a uh, one Rengen is equal to one rad to one rem and may be used interchangeably. Uh, but typically, I mean, you in your practice, you should decide on one unit. Uh, that's a good practice usually. And typically it's the, uh, the SI units. In terms of dosimeters, uh, you, you should remember to wear your uh, whole body badge Ring dosimeters as well. They are important if you are manipulating, in particular, particularly for process seat implants with LDR. Uh, not, as, not as much uh, with the afterloading technology since you're not actually um, handling the sources. But uh, this is uh, supposed to be uh, worn during these procedures. Uh, radiation area signs, you, you'll see that we have these. Typically, they are required by law to have around whether it's where the afterloader is stored or where the bolt is. So please uh, uh, learn these and uh, uh, realize that they're important to be posted regular by the regulators. So in conclusion uh, of my talk, uh, process HDR with real-time image guidance provide high quality implants, um, an efficient process using inverse planning, uh, the high, uh, the HDR radiation exposure uh, in current practice is minimal due to the afterloading um, and establishing ALARA controls. And the uh, quality management and QA processes and steps are essential to provide high quality HDR implants. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.